Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to compare these two awesome guitars from Epiphone. We have the Adam Jones Les Paul Custom in Silver Burst and the Jerry Cantrell Les Paul Custom in Wine Red. Let's check them out. Alright guys, well look, this is just a bit of fun really. We're taking a look at both of these guitars. Uh, they're both in very different price categories, but they're also quite similar guitars. So we've got seven categories we're going to look at today. We've got unique features, hardware, electronics, accessories, build quality, value for money and cost. So let's get into it. Let's check them out. Before we get into those categories, if you are enjoying the video and you like the content on the channel, do consider subscribing and liking the video, it really does help out. Cheers. So let's start with the Adam Jones then. We of course have that artist specific neck carve and that neck is a three piece maple neck with a volute on the back of the headstock. Of course we have the aged silver burst finish and you won't see this kind of finish on any other Epiphone Les Paul Customs. I've said it in my other video about this guitar but the, the older Epiphone uh, silver burst Les Pauls have a kind of perimeter burst whereas this has a teardrop burst and it is of course on the sides on the back of the neck and the back of the headstock. Uh, on top of that it is aged so it's kind of yellowing uh, the, the silver burst looks almost gold and then of course we have the artwork on the back of the body and on the back of the headstock and of course it is extremely limited so each of the variants are only having 800 produced. So in contrast to the Adam Jones the Jerry Cantrell doesn't really have as many kind of unique features. It does have a custom uh, neck carve, but beyond that, it, it doesn't really have an awful lot that kind of sets it apart. Other than the neck carve and the wine red finish, it, it's not really very different from a run of the mill Les Paul custom in white or ebony. So I think the unique features round goes to the Adam Jones. Back on the Adam Jones then and we're on the hardware category. Now really the hardware between these two guitars isn't that significantly different. The main differences are that the Adam Jones has these uh, diamond strap locks uh, from the kind of 70s Les Paul Customs and of course it has the flood bleeders on the controls. Uh, but the main thing for me that lets the Adam Jones down is the tuners which are kind of uh, a cheap Charla knockoff. Uh, they don't feel as substantial as the Grovers that come on most Les Paul Customs. So yeah, let's take a look at the Jerry Cantrell. So yeah, here's a Jerry Cantrell. And again, you know, the hardware itself is very similar. Uh, it doesn't have those uh, strap buttons, but to be honest, I don't think they really make a big difference. The big thing for me with the Jerry Cantrell is it does have Grover tuners. I think the Grover tuners give the Jerry Cantrell the win on the hardware. So going into the electronics category, we're currently out of draw, so let's take a look at the electronics on the Adam Jones. The big thing about the electronics with the Adam Jones is it does come with that Seymour Duncan pickup in the bridge as stock. The neck pickup is an Epiphone pickup, but it does of course have CTS pots. Now this Jerry Cantrell model is a little bit different from the one you would buy in the shop because I have upgraded the pickups, but the regular one does just come with Epiphone pickups albeit they are a slightly different pickup in the bridge than you would normally get. This also, like all of the Epiphones now, has CTS pots. Being as though this doesn't come with any pickup upgrades out of the factory, I'm going to give the win on this round to the Adam Jones. <laughs> the accessories round is a pretty close call for me. They both come with really good hard cases, but the Adam Jones just edges it out a little bit with that really cool chainsaw case from Gator. Uh, it doesn't have any artist branding on it, now that may be a win or a loss for you, but for me it's a win. So yeah, this round goes to the Adam Jones. <laughs> so build quality and finish then. Well this is where the Adam Jones is going to fall down a little bit I think. Uh, I mentioned in my previous video on this guitar, you can check that out up in the cards, that there are a few finishing issues on it. So around the binding down here, the paint hasn't been scraped away very well. The paint along the binding on the neck doesn't go in a straight line, it's kind of wobbly. There's a couple of little blemishes on the back of the neck. Very minor, but all the same, still 
not quite as good as a Jerry Cantrell. The Jerry Cantrell, on the other hand, is excellent. I don't really see any major blemishes, maybe one or two tiny little things on the binding, but really the fit and finish, the quality on this one is, is really up there. Uh, and in fact, my video on this guitar, you can also check that out in the cards, ask the question, is this better than the Gibson? Now, I'm not gonna say either way, but I think it gets pretty close, to be honest. Both these guitars have, you know, slight sharp fret ends, you know, could do with some decent fret work, but overall, the win goes to the Jerry Cantrell on this one. Next up is cost. To me, this is a tough one to justify. This guitar, albeit awesome, and I really love it, this cost £1,250 in the UK when I got it, and they have since had a price increase with the newer models that have come out. So to pick one of these up new, you're looking at £1,350. Now we do have to bear in mind that they've done a lot of extra things to this that they don't do to the regular Les Paul Customs. You know, it does have that three-piece neck, it adds the artwork on the back, and it is, of course, a kind of collector's piece. The Jerry Cantrell, on the other hand, comes in significantly cheaper at £750 in the UK, and I call that the win on the cost of the Jerry Cantrell. So value for money is our final round. Now cost and value for money do go hand in hand and you know, no guitar kind of questions the value for money aspect more than this one, in my collection at least. So I think we do have to take a couple of things into consideration for this guitar. It is a limited edition, it is a little bit special with the artwork. It does have a load of extra features that aren't part of the normal stock run. But really, I find it really difficult to say that this is value for money. The Jerry Cantrell, on the other hand, is significantly cheaper. And honestly, it's such a great guitar for the money. Do I think they could have done a few upgrades for that money? Sure I do, yeah. But I think overall, this is the one to go for if you want value for money. So wrapping up then guys, the Jerry Cantrell wins it. Honestly, I love both of these guitars and it's just a bit of fun. I think people are always going to argue about this one, about the Silver Burst. It's you know, so much more money. Epiphone really cutting into that kind of low-end Gibson pricing. Uh, yeah, it's a difficult one to justify. I think the finishing on the Jerry Cantrell is a little bit better. Uh, but you know, they're both very similar guitars at the end of the day. And really, you should go with what you love and what your budget allows for, right? Well, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks so much for watching. And again, if you are enjoying the content, please do consider subscribing. If you want to check out either of the videos I did on these guitars, you can check them out over here. And yeah, thanks again, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.